Big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. So it's about 5.30 a.m. and I'm here at Green Lake in Seattle and my plan is to do some long-range FPV or at least I should say long-range relative to this plane which is just tiny. Probably wouldn't consider it long-range compared to most FPV planes that are larger. And I think it's a little under five kilometers, um, close to 3.5 miles all the way around. And that should be just about the maximum range of this plane. Um, so hopefully we will have enough battery to get back and land here safely. So some details of the plane. Um, it's running a Pix Racer flight controller with RDU Pilot. It's got GPS. It's got a full FPV system with a TBS Unify and a run cam split for recording in HD. 3600 KV motors. These are little race drone motors. It's got a Dragon Link for control and bi-directional telemetry communication. And yeah, this is a little tiny, fully capable autonomous drone right here. On my goggles, I've got this crazy high gain directional antenna here to hopefully squeeze the most range out of this little 5.8 gigahertz system. So let's get up in the air. The plane is armed, camera's recording. I'm gonna turn, put it into auto mode. Now I should be able to just throw this thing and it'll autonomously launch. There it goes. Nice. So it's climbing in altitude now to the first waypoint. Getting compass errors as usual. <laughs> that was actually the smoothest takeoff I've ever had with this plane. I did one flight yesterday to make sure it was capable of flying waypoint missions properly. And uh, <laughs> it was a little bit sporadic to say the least. Wow, it's just cruising. I should get some shots of it. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to film that thing. It's so small. Um, let's check the FPV feed here with this crazy antenna. Oh, perfect video. That's awesome. I can see downtown Seattle in the distance. Looks like it's following the waypoint mission perfectly. This area that I'm flying in, uh, Green Lake specifically, a lot of people would consider doing long range FPV here to be reckless. But I would argue that that's not true. First of all, this plane weighs 230 grams, meaning the FAA doesn't even really classify it as a real drone. It's like in the toy category, basically, um, even though it has full long range autonomous capabilities. When you see like, let's say just kids at the park flying their big foam RC model airplane, that's like five times as dangerous as what I'm doing now. If that plane hit a baby in the face, that baby would have a bad day. That plane is heavier with a bigger propeller and it's much more likely to crash into a baby's face because those kids probably don't really know what they're doing. But this plane weighs nothing. It's autonomous, so it's very unlikely to fall out of the sky and hit a baby's face right now. And if it did hit a baby's face, it weighs only 230 grams, so that baby would probably just giggle. So I would say what I'm doing right now is perfectly safe. We are just cruising along. The air is so smooth this morning. So the plane is at 90 meters of altitude and we're cruising at nine meters per second. Um, the battery is down to 7.4 volts. I'm gonna start to get really concerned once it starts to get closer to seven volts, but we are about halfway done with the waypoint mission. So I think we should have uh, plenty of battery to get back here. This is a pretty long mission for this little tiny plane. Like 230 grams, that's not a lot of weight. I'm using these little 800 milliamp hour two cell batteries, so that little chunk right there has enough power in it to get that plane all the, all the way around the 3.5 mile lake. That's pretty incredible, honestly. We got some gooses coming in hot. Oh, those are ducks, Never mind. So we're coming up on Green Lake Park. That's kind of the central Green Lake area. There's a lot of people swimming out there every day. Um, not right now because it's 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm having the plane kind of cut across this bay um, just to make the waypoint mission a little bit shorter. I was concerned when I was planning this mission that the plane wouldn't be able to do it. But so far, so good.
I would even go so far as to say this is what the future of this hobby might look like. You know, uh, restrictions on like long range FPV stuff have been tightening down. And as you can see here, it's totally possible to build a fully autonomous FPV capable airplane that weighs almost nothing. So I'm sure that in the next few years we'll see more products like this or planes like this coming out on the market that aren't subject to all the other drone regulations for things that weigh over 250 grams. I think I'm behind some trees right now because my video is a bit staticky. <clears throat> we are down to 7.27 volts, which should be just enough to get back and land. So I'm going to do a manual landing right on the grass over here. Um, see if I can get a shot of the plane coming in. Oh, there it is, I think. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So I set the last few waypoints to descend in altitude. So I think it's going to loiter at around 40 meters or something like that. Yep, looks like it's starting to loiter. Orbit, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're at 7.2 volts. Plenty of power to fly around the lake. No problem. So now I'm going to flip it into fly-by-wire A mode and land it right over there on the grass, hopefully. Ooh, but I could do some FPV first. Check out Duck Island down there. Woo. I'll do a flyby so you can see where I'm sitting here. Woo. Just chilling on the dock. Here's Duck Island. You might remember that from my autonomous Tupperware video. Okay, let's land this puppy. Wow, the air is just so calm. Ugh. Not a lot of elevator authority there with uh, fly-by-wire A mode. Boy, there it is, safe and sound. Well, that went really smoothly. Urban, small-scale, long-range FPV. Pretty neat. Big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. If you're anything like my friends and I, you probably have some pretty good quarantine hair going on. But don't take those luscious locks for granted. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Keeps offers scientifically proven treatments that combat symptoms of hair loss. You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. They offer generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. This isn't voodoo magic here we're talking about people. It's the best stuff you can get. Say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor's visits. Because with Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get your medication automatically delivered to your home every three months. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash rctestflight or click on the link in the description to receive 50% off of your first order. Now back to the video. Okay, so I just programmed in a new waypoint mission that's going to fly down south um, a bit farther past the extent of the lake. There's a park that keeps going, um, Wallingford Park or whatever, I don't know what the name is, Woodland Park maybe, um, that keeps going down towards the city. So I'm going to fly out over that park and then turn around and come back. It'll be a little long range test to see uh, if I can get good video signal at that distance. I'm hoping we'll catch the sun on this one. There it goes, off into the sunrise, so majestic. Okay, it just hit waypoint number three, so it's starting the long range leg of the mission. Uh oh, I see a problem. It's not climbing to 60 meters like, I uh, know, 120, it should be climbing to 120 meters, and it's not doing that. It should still clear the trees at 60 meters, but <laughs> I don't know for sure. It's cutting it close for sure. I might have to call this mission off. Oh, we're also at seven volts. I'm putting it into return to home mode. No good. This battery, did I put the wrong battery in it or something? No, this one, it's the old one. Weird. Did I forget to charge this battery? Anyhow, uh, it's down to seven, that's, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Right as the sun is coming up.
So it's a new day. I actually charged the battery this time and I'm gonna try the long range mission again. Sweet, she's up. Sweet, so it's out over the middle of the lake now. It just hit the first two waypoints. Uh, it looks like it just hit the third, and now it's on the long range leg of the mission. Oh, that's awesome. I can see the city in the background. We're just about to uh, fly over land again. So during the long range south leg of this mission, we'll be over uh, Woodland Park the whole time. So we're not flying over like houses or anything like that. Oh uh, yeah, I see right now we're over the soccer field and about to go over the baseball fields. And then I can see Seattle out there in the distance. So I have the altitude set up relative to the terrain. So even though the plane is 100, it's on the telemetry, it's saying 103 meters, it's actually still only 90 meters above the ground um, because I have terrain altitude set up, not relative altitude. Relative meaning it would be relative to this point. Wow, so there's a view of Fremont, um, Lake Union, and Seattle in the distance. That's awesome. I think that's about a mile away. I'll put the exact distance up on the screen, but uh, it's pretty far. Definitely long range for a little tiny plane like this. Okay, we're about to make the turn here. It's going to turn to the east. Um, you can probably see the university district out there in the background. Okay, it's about to turn again back to the north. Looks like it's descending a bit. It must have set that waypoint a bit lower. It's back down to 92 meters. So now we are headed home. You can see the green lake there off in the distance. Uh, judging by the clouds, it's like there's some wind up there. It's dead calm on the ground, but these look like fairly low clouds and they're moving really quickly. So this plane might be fighting a little bit of a headwind now coming home. Oh yeah, 5.2 meters per second ground speed. That's not a lot, so uh-oh, uh hopefully we make it back. That's actually very concerning. I'm getting concerned about this whole uh, wind thing, so I'm going to try and see if I can set... I actually don't know how this uh, change altitude feature works when you're in a mission. But I'm going to try it. I'm going to set 80 meters, change altitude. Huh, I'm not getting good reception here. Change altitude. Oh yeah, it looks like it's doing it. Oh, it totally descended. Awesome. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to take it down to 70 meters. I'll just uh, fly under the wind. Yeah, I should film how fast the clouds are moving. It's like pretty crazy actually for, for how dead calm it is down here. Maybe I'll do a little time lapse. I'll set my phone over here on the box. Okay, so we're pretty low now. I'm gonna take it down again to 60 meters. It's diving again. So now we've gotta be sort of below the wind at this point battery is at 7.2 volts so we should have enough to make it back wow there's a big cloud layer coming in that's crazy and there's a freaking mavic god damn it i hate nothing more than seeing someone else's drone in the air i know it's hypocritical we're about to hit the last waypoint before it turns towards home and then it should start to loiter around here but i'll probably just flip it into fly by wire a mode and then manually land it in the grass here behind me Okay, I can hear it now. Coming in. Sweet, so I'm gonna flip it into fly-by-wire and fly-by-wire A and land it manually. Welcome back, little guy. 
I'm glad it made it back. Fighting the headwind up at high altitudes was a rough mission. So that was a fun little set of micro scale urban FPV missions. I hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for watching. Bye.